hear that? No? <laughs> Me neither. There's nothing quite like the deafening silence once the helicopter leaves and you are on your own at an outpost camp. We're with Arlook Outfitters in the heart of Newfoundland and Labrador. We're on the make for wild, fresh Atlantic salmon, fresh from the ocean. That means they're hot and that means they will leap. This big fish adventure starts right now on the new fly fisher. Absolutely fantastic. The new fly fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Fish USA Fly Shop, America's Fly Shop, Scientific Anglers. Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada, Welcome to the heart of Newfoundland and Labrador. At the base of Newfoundland's wild peninsula, there's a cabin. A cabin in the middle of nowhere. A cabin where the closest signs of civilization are but a helicopter ride away. A cabin where some of the finest guides in the province choose to work their craft. Welcome to Arlook Outfitters and their incredible outpost cabin on Caribou Lake, a feeder lake and tributary to the main river. It's midsummer, the bugs are gone, and Atlantic salmon are making their way to their spawning grounds. We're here to intercept these anadromous fish as they embark on their journey upstream. I'll be honest with you, this adventure isn't for everybody. It's pure wild, it's hard work, it's a slog through Newfoundland bogs, and it's enough to test anyone's mettle. One thing that it isn't, it isn't for the faint of heart. That said, it's pure adventure, and if you're up for it, extremely rewarding for any fly angler. Our guide on this adventure is Scott Brake, a seasoned salmon guide in Newfoundland and Labrador and an expert on the fish of the main river. We begin our day after an early breakfast and load up the boat to begin our journey into the unknown, our journey to the main river. The adventure to the main takes you across Caribou Lake, clear across the other side from the cabin. It's a 10 minute boat ride to the outflow from here, you pack up and make the four kilometer walk through the bog to the main river. Remember to look up every once in a while because it's as rugged and beautiful as any wild and pristine landscape. This is Scott Brake. He is a guide here at Arlick Outfitters. Scott, what are you in for today? This is a fantastic salmon day, it looks like. We should be in for some good fishing. The uh, weather's good, nice overcast skies. Uh, so it should be really prime fishing mm -hmm. for the temperature and stuff where it's not so hot. Yep, yep. So main river is primarily a gross river, but we do have a shot at catching big salmon here, don't we? Most definitely. We done actually pretty good last week with bigger salmon. Okay. So uh, we're hoping we'll get some good hookups on some bigger fish. Right, it's the middle of July and the fishing is on fire. Our walk to the first run is only about 10 minutes from the trail's end at the main. You'll cross tributaries, grass islands, and bouldery shorelines on your journey to Idiot's Rock. 
Scott, I'm an addict for dry fly fishing. Bombers, love them. I'm gonna start with that, is that cool you? Sounds good. We'll uh, cast towards these, this rock right here upriver yeah. and let it did, did float all the way down uh -huh. through both sides of the rock and even let it come right in and hit the rock. Okay. Because a lot of times the fish will just come right straight up at it okay. off the rock. Okay. That was a fish. Was that a trout? Trout, yeah. How do you like that? You missed the fly, dude. The fish are here. We can see them moving in the pool. However, they aren't moving on a bomber. We decide to put a little action on the surface to grab their attention. So I pull out an undertaker and tie it on with a hitch. Now I'm gonna have to move, move this bug on my own, right? I'm gonna have to pull it, skate it myself. Yeah, you're probably gonna wanna pull it a bit for sure, yeah. It's just water speed's not overly fast here. Right? But we will walk up walk train up and, and yeah. cast like 45, right? Nope. Didn't prick him. I rolled that fish on an undertaker, but I couldn't get it to move again. So I switched flies to one called None Your Business and put it right back in the same spot. Gets into the cow water. Cow water. There you go. <laughs> I was gonna say, when your fly gets into the cow water, just give it a little pull. It was right on that seam, yeah. right on that edge. We tried, uh, woo, tried fishing a, a bomber for a little bit this morning and wasn't able to do anything. Didn't move any fish. Um, so we switched over to a wet fly, a hitched wet fly. And uh, after a little bit of effort, I'm proven not the idiot at Idiot's Rock. So pa patience is key, right, Scott? You gotta, I mean, this is the second time through this run. We didn't move a fish the first time. No, that's right. Um, Dang, these things are great. And it came just off the inside of that, or sorry, the outside, our side of that seam there, and just came up and whacked it. Worst of it here is the water, we're so dark. Not done yet. Was that eight or nine jumps? That's insane. <laughs> and he hasn't seen me, it would have yeah, Exactly. But look how he digs his nose down, trying to get be rid of that fly, right? Oh, yeah. Good job, look at this fat little guy, hey? I'll just get past that to you. Yes, sir. Thanks. Flies on the other side. All right, let's let this guy go. Another one jump right from the rock. Yeah. <laughs> Drop the net for me, please. Yeah. Purple. No sea lice on it, but look how thick it is across the back. A good girls. Really nice fish. Yeah, beautiful. All right, where you go? See you, bud. So tell me about this fly. It's called None of Your Business, right? Yeah, that's correct. None of Your Business. It's just a dark body fly with uh, some uh, crystal flash, basically. Works very, very well here. Yeah. Dark flies in general. And uh, I'm all about flash. <laughs> yeah, so the darker, the better with a little bit of flash. And that did the trick on this. Yeah. We fished Idiot's Rock for about another hour and decided to make a move about a 10 minute walk upstream to a convergence of two parts of the main river. They call this Sam's Run. This is your favorite stretch of the river? Yeah, I really like it here at Sam's, yeah. How do you want me to fish it? We're gonna cast basically to the other side of the run and let okay. it sweep. Let it come right to the other side where it goes dead water. Yeah. There's a lot of fish will take right at the dead water. Okay. 
So don't start close to me, just, just go right across and begin. Yeah, yeah, let us sweep right across. Okay. Sam's run is faster water than that of Idiot's Rock. Therefore, I don't need to put any movement on the fly and can simply let the current move the riffle hitch across. Too. You can move down to the rock just so it's not so long. There you go. Forward. Again. That's a good. Oh, he came off. That was a good fish. <laughs> Thank you. It's tough with long line like this, huh? It is it's definitely hard, yeah, to do a good hook set with a long line. But you can't you can't walk into their into their home. No, you'll drive them, right? You yeah. push them off. But right where those two currents meet on that bubble line, that's where all those fish were were taking. It's got some weight to it. Yep. Yeah, we haven't had a jump yet. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. In Newfoundland, uh, with retention, you can't keep a fish 63 centimeters or above. They base it on being the main spawners or the bigger fish. Obviously, right. they're going to produce more eggs, so there's no retention on that. Got him. He's trying. He's trying. <laughs> and he comes right at me. Yeah. They don't quit, do they? No, no, very, very strong. For like such a small fish, very, very strong. It's all wrapped up now. Come on, buddy. He's he's about done. Ooh. Stuff. Now, once again, here at our look, it's a quantity game but you do have opportunity to dance with grills that are pushing salmon size. That guy's getting close. You got his gill plate, he's missing. And he's missing a gill plate, interesting. All right, buddy, go grow up. See you next year. Oh. Good stuff. I'm glad it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even see the eat, did you? No, I didn't see it and under the water for sure. It looked like the same area at all as the, uh, where you come up from before, roughly. Ooh, this, oh yeah, this fish. A little bit of shine to that one. So I took this fish after I actually poked it and I gave it a rest, went back in the, with the same length of line. Whoa, whoa, that's what Atlantic salmon fishing is all about. The eats and the jumps. It slowed down a little bit this afternoon after lunch. We're into one, so that's okay. And we switched flies too. We went from a nunya business to a black bear green butt. Barbless, of course. Sometimes you gotta work and sometimes it's all the sweeter. It's amazing that just a slight fly change can make all the difference in the world. Isn't it, Scott? No, oh, it is, yeah. Just a little bit of difference. Show them something a little bit different and it's a, diff it's a whole different ball game. It's like the fishery's brand new. <laughs> That's right. 
That's our quad or some hard to see. Where are you? Going? We're actually gonna switch just switch back right back to that original fly and add a couple of swipes. But that's the ticket, right? If you if you move a fish and he doesn't come connected, let it rest. Give it a couple of minutes and then you can come back and hopefully it'll play along. Arlook Outfitters is a staple in the Newfoundland and Labrador salmon world. Arlook consists of a primary lodge on the main river, which takes six anglers, and Caribou Lake Lodge, which is well appointed for four individuals. Couple that with your own private chef, and a two angler to one guide ratio, all you have to do is worry about the fishing. Caribou Lodge is powered off the grid with hot and cold running water, Wi-Fi if needed, and all the rustic comforts of home. Day two, and we're off on another adventure to the main. Joining us today is Lodge Manager, Brad LeDrew. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> why, is it, why is the boat still? We had torrential rains the night before, and this got me curious as to how that would affect conditions. So we will fish downstream on the main river, while Brad decides to fish upstream. Scott, big rain last night. How's yeah. that going to affect the salmon? It uh, should put the water levels up a bit, which is uh, will be really good. Yep. And uh, we'll definitely should get some fresh fish moving through. So. Okay. So what's the plan for the day? We're going to uh, take the canoes and uh, move down river to uh, a few pools down below, Bumblebee and Paradise. Mm -hmm. They hold a lot of salmon, so uh, it's, it's one of the prime areas, really. Do we have any uh, any chances for dry fly today? Maybe. Hundred percent. Paradise pool, dry fly for sure. Cool. All right. We begin at Crosby's Pool. Here you go. That's a nice fish. That is a nice one. That's a salmon. So a very different ball game here. In this slower water, it really places an emphasis on getting the right fly speed um, so that you're just seeing that wake. The wake is crucial to get these salmon to eat. I rose probably five or six fish before I was able to get hooks into this one, and it's a, it's a good one. It is a big fish. Now with barbless, barbless hooks, when these fish jump, even if you do have a belly in the line that will keep that line tight in the fish's mouth, it always pays to give them a little bit, throw the line at them a bit, bow to the fish like you would a tarpon. Take line when you can. Don't let them rest. Keep pressure on them all the time. I forgot to take my life jacket off. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here, I forgot my life jacket. Nothing but power with these salmon. Good job, Scott. Nice. Pretty work. Pretty nice fish. Yeah, not quite a salmon, but. Yeah, he's side size on East Spice yeah. Limit. Okay, let's lower the net. Great fish out of our look outfitters. Nose upstream, and away he goes. That is something else. Now we can get rid of this life jacket. <laughs> so what's the difference between a salmon and a grills? Well, obviously they're both Atlantic salmon, but the differentiation lies in the fish's age and size. 
Generally, a grouse is a fish that is returning for its first time to the river from the ocean, while a salmon is considered a salmon when it's been back to the river twice or more and is larger than 63 centimeters or 24 inches. Fish less than 63 centimeters or 24 inches are considered grills. We head down to Bumblebee Pool and things take off in a hurry. So uh, this is uh, Bumblebee, what we call Bumblebee, and he uh, just hooked a fish. <laughs> That's a nice fish too. What was that, three casts? Uh, first cast to the, to the side, this is a big fish. It is a nice fish, yeah. Uh, That's a real nice one. Well, how do you like that? First cast at Bumblebee, this is a stud. <laughs> this one is uh, pushing 12, 14 pound for sure. <laughs> he just came up and crushed it. You're uh, good here for rocks. The only worries you got about rocks is in here. Okay. And this is eight pound. I've got on here. You find it, Scott, that it's like that first cast in a pool is often the best? Usually, yeah. First guy at the pool will usually get a, usually hit right on a fish right away. Where are you two? I can't see you. This dark water is hard to see, huh? Super, super hard. He's not done. He's leaving a hole in the river, man. Especially where we got a bit of ripply water here. It's really tough to see him until they come right close to the top. I know he's there somewhere. Jeez. Raw power, nothing but power. No. no, I'm not ready yet. That's the thing with these giants. It's cold water, do not rush them in. You've got eight pound test on here. Take your time, enjoy it. That's what this is all about. That's what Atlantic fishing, Atlantic salmon fishing is all about is enjoying the fight. Once you get to see that eat. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? You're killing me fish. He's just slashing the pool. Pure power. Fresh fish, too. It is a fresh fish. Come in probably from the rain, huh? Yes! Nice, oh. nice, nice. Oh my God. Nice. That's a hog. <laughs> it's a big salmon. Look at that. Whoa, what a thrill. What an absolute beast. All right, let's let this amazing fish go. That's a fish. <laughs> right, right there, yeah. There Got him. No salmon. Yeah. He rolls one right in close, too. Woohoo! Nice grills. <laughs> Jump in my waders! It's funny when they all of a sudden they know they're hooked, then it's then it's lights out, right? Now, do you like fishing these fish with high pressure or side pressure? Uh, depending, you can go side pressure, especially depending on the way they're jumping and stuff. Side pressure is fine. Little male. Yeah. Very nice. You just let them go. Unfortunately, after that fish, the river really started to rise. It came up three feet in an hour. 
So we decided to grab a bite to eat and head back to Caribou Lake Lodge to strategize for tomorrow. When we got back, our chef George Morgan had a traditional Newfoundland Jigs dinner ready. And oh, what a treat it was. Fishing here at Main River is, it's, it's an area where you can catch multiple, there's multiple hookups per day. And it's also an area where you can get a lot of grills and smaller size salmon. We, we're not known in Main River for large salmon, but we do have a large population of grills. Most time they're easy to fly because of the uh, darkness of the water. And uh, most of the time, the temperature of the water stay you know, uh, at, at a good temperature, uh, less than 20 degrees for the most part. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a river that you can easily fish, not a long line. Great spot for beginners, actually. Day three, woke up early to a hearty breakfast prepared by George and made the decision to fish the nearby inflow to Caribou Lake. There's a small creek that flows into the lake which holds Atlantic salmon. We decide to fish the creek in the morning to allow the water level on the main river to drop to fishable levels. There are spawning grounds upstream from Caribou and this inflow is perfectly placed just steps from the lodge. Scott, another fabulous morning here at Caribou Lake. What's the plan for the day? Uh, we're going to uh, try here by the uh, camp again this morning. Uh, the water where it rose up yesterday yep. uh, should have brought in a few new fresh fish. So we'll try here before we make our way down to the main part of the river and uh, head up river and try a few pools there. Let the uh, let the main river settle down a bit. That's right. Got a blue charm tide on here. Ready to dance? Yep, that's Let's right. Dance. Let's give it a go. I'm in a bit of a unique situation here where I've got basically no back cast at all. And um, in order for me to get this fly out to where I need it, I need to employ two different casts. Uh, they're both roll casts actually. The first one is your traditional roll cast where you simply bring your line back till you form this D behind you. And then using the load of the water of the fly line on the water, you can load the rod and punch the line out. Well, that's great until I get to a certain point where I can't do that anymore because I can't get enough back. So what I'm doing is a cross body roll cast. So what I'm doing is coming across my body like this until the D forms and then letting it go with a bit of a side angle on the rod so that your fly doesn't come back and hit the rod tip. A bit of angle change, hey, Mark? Yeah, the angle change did it. They've been seeing flies coming left to right the whole time. Switch it up, go right to left. It's a different ball game, right? I knew we'd figure out the puzzle sooner or later, Scott. Yeah. Yeah, there it is, just getting the right fly. And the right Brighter angle. fly, more, more aggressive. What fun. It's all part of figuring out the puzzle though. This water change has really messed these fish up or changed their habits anyway. Yeah, they're and not you've holding got to adapt. they normally hold. 
We were talking last night over a cocktail about how with the water rising up, the fish that were here probably pushed up this brook. And it's gonna take a little bit of time for the new fish to come from way over the lake and find this place. Maybe they're just arriving. Small grills, but hey man, on tough days, these pay. Oh, he's off. We got every bit of him. Early afternoon, we decide to make the trek back to the main river. The bog is saturated, and there are now streams where in days past, there weren't. Scott, we're down here now at the main river. Um, are we gonna go up or down? Down to Bumblebee or? Uh, we're gonna go up here on the hill and uh, look down river just to check the water levels and that'll, uh, that'll give us our answer on if we're gonna go up river or down river for the fishing today. Okay. It's come down about a foot from three, right? Oh, guaranteed a foot. Okay, sure. All right, let's go take a look. What do you think? Water's at least after coming down a foot, if not more. But uh, for today, we'll definitely go up river and we'll hit down river tomorrow. It's not low enough? No, it's not really low enough. Tomorrow will definitely be a good bit better. So then tomorrow we'll go back up to, down to Bumblebee and then hit Paradise for some dry fly? That's right. Okay. Well, let's get your stuff and we'll head up river. Sure thing. Walking up river, the wind picks up and it is absolutely relentless. Well, this is feeling better already. Oh yeah. That was a different fish. Yeah, he was over more. Oh, yes sir. Got that one. Yes sir. Oh! One of them days, remember what I say? It is one of those days. Mm -hmm. Fish, fish, fish. Watch that fish. Rock here, Mark. Oh, nice one. Nice, there. nice, nice. It's been a uh, it's been a challenging day. The wind has been brutal, but we've persevered, changed flies, moved locations, watched the water drop throughout the day, and uh, I finally come tight to on here on the main river. Uh, again, swinging flies, nice fish, good salmon. Now we moved down to two trees and um, whew, I'm out of breath. And uh, I've, I've raised four fish and I've whiffed on all of them. I don't know, it's the wind, angler error, funky fish or what, but it doesn't matter. We're into one now. Um, and that's one of the things that's important about salmon fishing is some days are diamonds and some days are dust. You know, on, on hard days, Atlantic salmon fishing, you get one good one and it's a, gr it's a great one and it makes the whole day. No, 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 no. Get away from that rock. 
It's one of those deals where you just, you just gotta put in your time and your confidence drops and you feel like crap because you're missing fish when you know it's important. But it'll happen. Especially on such a prolific river like Main River in Newfoundland. You know, there's thousands upon thousands of salmon in here and uh, all kinds of different sizes too, which is, which is great to see. Tons of par, tons of grills, a couple of big fish. This is an unbelievably important fish right now. <laughs> I am so happy with this salmon. We've worked really, really hard for it. And, um, but that's salmon fishing, that's the sport, right? You, you, may, you may get a shot at five in a day, you may get a shot at none in a day, but we've got one in the net. It's a male, it's got a kipe on its jaw. I'm gonna pull it out and just lower it in the water. You can see it's kipe right here. Part of the reason why I caught that fish was the way that I was fishing this stretch of river. Um, I started up at the top of the run, cast to the bank, let it swing down on the length of line that was from my rod tip to the edge of the bank, took a half a step down, did the same thing. Half a step down, did the same thing. What you're doing when you're doing that is you're actually dissecting the river six inches or a foot by six inches or a foot. So if you're gonna pass a fly in front of a fish's nose, it's gonna be either a foot in front or, it's, or six inches in front, or it's gonna be over its head. So by methodically moving down step by step, inch by inch, putting your flies through six inches or a foot at a time, you're gonna put those flies in front of those fish. And that's what happened. I can't see the rock that's there, but I managed to put it right in front of the rock, had three rises, and on the fourth rise, we hooked up that salmon. <laughs> He's there. So how important is it when a fish rises on your fly that you and misses it that you actually rest that fish? Tell me about that process. It is a good idea to let the fish rest because it lets them move back into place where he was resting before. A lot of times if you don't, you're casting the fly over them and passing. At least it gives them a chance to settle back in where he was sitting and then uh, He'll usually come right back at the fly if you leave him alone for a little bit, right? That's the best thing to do, just so they can get back in their lie more or less than anything else. And if you prick one? Hey, if you prick one, there's a very good chance that he's probably not gonna come back for the fly. Looks like something's changed throughout the day. Maybe the water's, ooh, nice fish. Maybe the water's dropped enough, right? That it's, that the fish are starting to, to hole up and, and be in the regular spots. I raised, I raised a fish off that rock four, three times and this was the fourth eat and we managed to get them buttoned. But as you know, with Atlantic salmon, getting them buttoned is only half the battle. Getting them in the net is the other, especially when they're fresh from the ocean. Oh, he's come off, that's okay. We got all the good stuff out of that fish. That was a good one. That was a big fish, man. <laughs> you go from absolute zero all day to two fish in five minutes. It's incredible. Well, today was one of those days that keep you very humble as a salmon angler. You know, really, really high highs 
and basement desperate low lows. But you know what? Nobody got hurt and tomorrow's another day. Flies to consider when fishing the main river in Newfoundland and Labrador are Bombers Bee Bug Black Bear Green Butt White Winged Blue Charm Undertaker And none of your business. In all honesty, I came well overgunned for this adventure with our look outfitters. You know, all you really need is an eight weight, nine foot fly rod, a floating line, a large arbor reel because these salmon will take you for a run and the appropriate leader for the size of fish you're catching. Now, I was lucky enough that I was fishing eight pound test and was able to manage to land that 12 to 14 pound salmon. So with the right outfit, nine foot rod, lots of flex, lots of bend, you can battle big fish uh, here in Newfoundland. It's a really great system, large arbor reel, floating line, no weight, no barbs on your flies, and you're good for pure adventure. There's some other equipment that you really should consider when coming on an outpost adventure here at Arlock Outfitters. It's all about getting you and your gear to the river safely. First and foremost, you really need to invest in a good, heavy-duty set of waders. I can't stress heavy-duty enough. Walking through the bog and walking through the forest, there's laydowns, there's sticks that could come up and grab you. Plus, you want to stay comfortably dry while wading in the river. In addition to that, you're also going to need a good quality boot with um, titanium bits on the bottom. Um, this is a boa style boot, which means that it doesn't have laces. It actually has a, um, a cord that you can tighten and loosen as needed. But the key to this boot is the high ankle. When walking through the bog, there are holes that you will be stepping in and there are roots that run through those holes. So the ankle support is vital. Now, while walking through the bog and on the river, you'll also need a quality wading staff. One that's collapsible that you can take on a plane or a helicopter, and this will help you in uh, less than in, uh, boardwalk conditions. You know, sometimes the walking can get a little bit difficult. Now, to get your stuff there safely, I highly recommend that you bring a quality waterproof backpack, something that you could bring your lunch, your water, uh, your flies and stuff in. There are times when you will be putting your bag down in wet conditions and you don't want your sandwich or your stuff getting wet. Now to that, when you're on the river, I also bring along a sling pack. Sling pack allows you to keep your floatant, your flies, any of the line that you need um, with you so you don't have to go back into your bag uh, that's on your back or, or inconvenient when you may be into getting into salmon. So these couple of items will make your trip safe, will make your trip comfortable, and allow you to maximize your time on the river catching these fantastic Atlantic salmon. It's our final day at Arlook Outfitters and the water is now back to normal flows. I cannot tell you how excited I am for today. The water looks absolutely perfect. Yeah, the water height is really good here now. So when we go down river today, down to uh, Bumblebee, Crosby's and Paradise, we should have some real good fishing with some fresh fish. So with 40 millimeters of rain falling two or three nights ago, the water levels come down. What, are the, what, what does that mean for the river and the fish? It is really good for the river because the fish will start holding now in the pools. Right. And there'll be a fresh run that comes up? Yeah, most definitely a fresh run. All right, so a lot of silver fish, hopefully some big ones. Uh, we're gonna launch the canoes and head down to Crosby's. Indeed, let's go.
Paradise Pool is well known at Arlock for being a deadly bomber pool. And to be honest with you, it's my favorite way to fish Atlantic salmon. However, today was unlike any day I've seen as a salmon angler. The fish weren't eating, but they were moving to the bomber and bumping it, knocking it, swirling on it, often with a closed mouth. It's aggressive behavior to witness. But it wasn't until we saw the slow motion footage back at camp did we realize what was happening. I thought I was continuously missing takes. However, the flies were never eaten by the fish. It was incredible to see and also incredibly frustrating to witness. We headed back up to Bumblebee Pool and had one final session before it was time to go. Fish. Scott and I have been uh, running around Main River trying to figure out where these fish are. We were here this morning and just jumped one. And then we went down to Paradise to do some dry fly fishing and only rose a couple of fish, got hooked, got a hook into one fish and that was it. So we come back up to Bumblebee and very first cast, we've got a salmon. Maybe things have changed. Maybe the water's dropped enough that these fish are now comfortable. We will see. It's good fish though. Scott, does it usually take a couple days after a big rainstorm for these fish to get back in, into their, um, into their lies and, and or, or are they still moving, do you think? Because we're still, you know, we still have another foot to drop. Yeah, they're still moving a bit, but uh, the water is getting down to a pretty good height here now. So uh, they should start holding up for sure. Good job. Well, hopefully this is a sign of things to come and things are turning around. There's a nice fresh fish. Oh, it is. Look, at, it is super silver. Still, still, still green. Get her out. There you go. It flies out. The fish. She will let me know. She's good to swim away. Well, as you can see, the ceiling has dropped and we are waiting for a window for the helicopter to come and pick us up from Caribou Lake on this awesome adventure. I wanna thank everybody at our look for their hospitality and the incredible fishing. The Atlantic salmon fishing here has been absolutely fantastic. For more in our series, check us out at www.thenewflyfisher.com. My name's Mark Melnick. Remember, adventure is out there. All you need to do is go and find it. And what better way than to do it with a fly rod in your hand? From all of us here at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you soon in the great province of Newfoundland and Labrador. The New Fly Fisher is supported by Newfoundland and Labrador Outfitters Association, Orvis Fly Fishing, Fish USA Fly Shop, America's Fly Shop, Scientific Anglers, Trout Unlimited, WeatherTech Canada,